Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How are we doing this morning? It looks like we are a little bit cold. Hallelujah. May the Lord help us. <laughs> Amen. I myself, I was a bit struggling um, when I was sitting down. But sometimes that's how the devil want to play. Hallelujah. Whenever God has something special for his children, you know, the enemy will try and prevent it. But thank God I am here. Hallelujah. And I came uh, bearing gifts. The gift of the good news. Hallelujah. Amen. Somewhere in the Bible, Acts chapter 3, 6, the Bible says that Peter and John, they, they woke up one morning, they said, we are, we're going to pray. We're going to church. We're going to pray. And on their way, they met this gentleman. And that gentleman was sitting in his, in his I don't know how to put it, but this is a person that has been invalid for a very long time and probably have accepted his fate, his fate that this condition is not going to change. I might as well make something out of this. Hallelujah. The Bible says that when Peter and John approach this gentleman, he looked intently at them, expecting that Peter and John would give them money. This morning, I don't know what your expectation is from God, but whatever that expectation is, God is here to meet that. Hallelujah. Maybe you ask God for something. And you've been waiting and waiting and waiting and asking God, when is this going to happen? The year is almost coming to an end, and I have not seen. I am here to let you know that God is not a respecter of time. Hallelujah. He can do it. He can do it. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how long it has taken. God can still do it. My life is just a testimony. I always say to myself, I'm a living testimony. If not the, the, the restrictions that were put on the Bible, that we shouldn't add or take anything out of it, you probably will see the gospel according to Faisal. Hallelujah. Because my life alone, can fill maybe 25% of the Bible. I just want to give you a little background of my life. I was raised in a Muslim family. All my siblings are still Muslims. And just think about it. To come out of that religion, everybody is going to you know, abandon you. It's going to be hard. Right? I've experienced all that. And that's not what I want to talk today. But I want to tell you that it doesn't matter where you are coming from. The de destination is what is important. Today you might be at a place where you, you think this is not where I envision to be. But I'm here this morning to assure you that wherever that God has laid, whatever that God has laid upon your heart, whatever that you have envisioned that your life is going to be, it is not too late. God is going to do it in your life. Hallelujah. Oh, you didn't like that. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So they look intentively at Peter and John. And Peter and John look at the gentleman and say, my friend, <laughs> Today is your, is your lucky day. Hallelujah. They were, the gentleman was expecting arms from them. 
But Peter and John look at this gentleman and said, silver and gold, we are broke. But that which we have, hallelujah, you might not have that million dollar in your bank account as I'm speaking right now. But that which you have in you, that which God has deposited in you, is able to give you more than what you are envisioning. Hallelujah. It says, silver and gold have I none, but such that I have, I give unto thee. Brothers and sisters, we cannot give what we don't have. Right? But Peter, knowing what he had, he said, but such that I have, I will give unto you. In the name of who? Oh, Kabosi and Araba. I thank God that it's not any other name, but in the name of who? Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. Hallelujah. This morning, somebody is going to rise up and walk. Hallelujah. Somebody's destiny is about to change this morning. Hallelujah. One time, Moses met God. And God gave him assignment. <laughs> and Moses, being curious, said, but you are telling me that I should go tell a certain people that you want to deliver them. When I go, what should I tell them? Sometimes it's good to ask God questions. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, I was pondering about this and I said, for those that have children, children, when they are coming to their parents, they don't need permission. It doesn't matter whether you are on the Zoom call whether you are in an important meeting, they will just walk in and ask, Mommy, I need this. Daddy, I need this. Because they know what? One thing. They have access. Hallelujah. Even the most powerful person in our world right now, the president, their children don't need access. They have access. Hallelujah. And God told Moses, there is nothing that I can compare to myself right now. There is nothing that I can relay for you to understand the person that is sending you. When you go, tell them that I am, that I am, have sent you. They will understand. The self-existing God. The one who was not created, but created all things. Hallelujah. He is the one that has sent you that he is going to deliver his people. Hallelujah. This morning I am saying this to stir something up in you. As you receive the unadulterated word of God. Hallelujah. And I pray that you will use this word to encourage someone else. To bring someone else into the knowledge of Christ. Amen. Please kindly give me Genesis chapter 3, verse 4. My message this morning to you is that it's entitled, The Origin of the Gospel. This month has been dedicated as the, the Gospel Month, the month for the Gospel. Hallelujah. And we are all being encouraged to what? Preach the gospel to all nations. Our friends, our families, our community, people that we come across. Hallelujah. And one of the things that I have realized that the devil is using is misconception. And this didn't start right in our generation. It started right at the source. That is why there's a saying that if you want to deal with an issue, you go back to the source. Hallelujah. So this morning, we are going all the way back to the origin and then build our case from there. Hallelujah. It's going to take some reading, but please bear with me. 
once you have this, you'll be able to deal with some of the questions that comes up when you are evangelizing. Hallelujah. Amen. Genesis chapter 3, verse 4. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. Hallelujah. You will not surely die. But when you go back to Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, the Bible says that after God created everything, he planted a garden called Garden of Eden. And that Garden of Eden was placed in the east. Hallelujah. And then God put everything that man needs in that garden. And God told man that you see all these beautiful things in this garden here, they are yours. But there are two things in this garden that are mine. Hallelujah. Human nature. God said, everything is yours. You can eat it. You can do whatever you want to do with it. But these two things in this garden is mine. And one of them, the day you touch it, the day you eat the fruit from that, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you will die. Then came the devil. <laughs> Oh, did God say that you're going to die when you eat from that tree? Oh, you will surely not die. Was the devil lying? Was he, I, I, it's just a rhetorical question. It, was, he, was he lying? Mm -hmm. The truth is that God was not talking about physical death. God was talking about spiritual separation from him. Hallelujah. Because after Adam and Eve ate the fruit, they lived for hundreds of years. Right? So the death that God was talking about was spiritual death separation from God, disconnection from God. Hallelujah. But the devil being cunning used the words of God and twisted it and said, oh, did he say you're going to die? No, you're not going to die. You are rather going to gain knowledge, wisdom. You're going to be like God. And who, who don't want to be like their father? Everybody want to be like their father, right? That same, that same cunningness the devil is using in our generation to, pre to prevent people from what? Receiving the salvation that God has given to us. Amen. When you read Genesis chapter 3, verse 23, the Bible says that they were banished after they fell. Because when God came to, to the garden at the cool of the day, God came to have what intimate relationship with Adam. And God called on Adam, Adam, I am here. Where are you? The first word that came from Adam's mouth is that, I heard your voice, and I was afraid. Hallelujah. This is the same person that God will come every day at the cool of the day and have nice conversation with. The day that Adam sinned, there was physical separation and spiritual separation from God. Hallelujah. I want to ask you this question this morning. Do you know why? Whenever people encounter angels, holy beings of God, they are always afraid. Because they are holy. They are holy. 
And because we are not to that standard, that same experience that Adam experienced when he sinned against God, that, that fear that came upon him is the same thing that we experience when we see them. Because we are not up to there. Hallelujah. The devil was playing politics with Eve. Saying that, do you think you are going to die? You are not going to die. You will live. You will eat. The, you will rather have knowledge. You will know good and evil. You will be like God. Hallelujah. But she has forgotten in verse 1, 26. God says that, let us make man in our own image, according to our likeness. Hallelujah. And let man has what? Dominion. Power over all creation. So God already has a plan that he's making man in his own image and according to his likeness. So why should someone also come back and tell you that, oh, if you do something that God has asked you not to do, you will be like God. This is the, this is the same thing that the devil is doing in our generation. There are many people that think, oh, because I do good, because I don't insult my elders, it because um, I pay my tithe, because I, I go about things respectfully, because I do everything that is required for me in my society, that is enough. Hallelujah. That is not enough. It's a misconception. Salvation is not how good you are. Or how good you've been to people. Salvation is a different thing that God himself has laid for us. Because when you read from Genesis, it says that after they have sinned, God asked them to leave the garden. That is the presence of God, where God's presence was. And then God put a measure of security between man and the garden. And he says that perhaps they will go back and eat from the tree of life. And if they are to go back and eat from the tree of life, then we will live in perpetual sin without going back. Hallelujah. So God prevented that with the notion that I have put in place a salvation to bring mankind back to me. And that salvation is through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. So you see how far I have gone and we are coming back home now, right? Just so that we have understanding of these things, where it all began. And why we need to do what we have to do. Why the need of salvation. Hallelujah. The reason, number one, is that man fell, man sinned. And in order for God to bring us back to where we belong, where he can call us sons and daughters, there has to be an atonement for our sin. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Amen. I want us to project Acts chapter 10, one, verse 1 going. This talks about a man called Cornelius. The Bible said that there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment. Let's continue. A devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people 
and pray to God always. Does this description describe someone here? Hallelujah. Let's continue. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius, let's continue. And when he observed him, he was afraid. This is a military man, career military man. And he saw an angel and he was afraid. So just you and I, we will run. What is it, Lord? So he said to him, your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial before God. Hallelujah. This is a man that has devoted himself to the things of God. Right? He was a captain of an army. A devoted man. Someone who reverences God. Someone who obeys God. Even his household are like-minded. Hallelujah. The Bible says that he gave to the poor, to the needy. And he is always in constant praise. But something was missing. This morning, maybe the description is for you. But I'm here to tell you that there is something more to it than what you have read. Something was missing in the life of Cornelius. And that thing that was missing in the life of this gentleman is salvation. Hallelujah. Even though he was a good man, not every man is good. Trust me. One of my, uh, my relatives, the dad, died. And um, we went somewhere in the Nungwa area, and they were doing a funeral, and we were just there. And they were kind of say people were saying things about the, the man. And then one gentleman stood up and said, hey, I know this man. He was a good man. And then there was this little boy behind me. He rose and said, what? That man is so mean. Whenever we kick a soccer ball to his house, he would just take the ball and then cut it. See? So not every man, not every man is a good man. But we are talking about Cornelius, someone that God testified that he is a good man. But something was missing. This morning, if you are listening to this message, whether you stumble upon it online or someone just asks you to listen to the series that we, we, we post on, on social media, I am speaking to you. Maybe you find yourself in the same shoes as uh, Cornelius. You are a good person. You give to the poor. You support those that are in need. You take care of the widows among our society. But there is something missing. Hallelujah. And that thing is salvation. The Bible says that as through one man sin came into this world, so through one man Salvation has come unto all. Hallelujah. Amen. So the channel of salvation is not up for debate. God has given the principle that you have to follow, that I have to follow in order to attain this eternal life that we are talking about. But if you think you can do it by your own wisdom, you can do it by your own understanding or social norms, it is not going to work. Because the principles of God are not for debate. Hallelujah. So the angel told Cornelius, call for Peter. 
call for Peter, for I have heard your cry. Call for Peter, and Peter will provide what is missing. Whilst God was dealing with Cornelius, he was dealing with Peter at the same time. Hallelujah. The Bible says that when you continue to read, God gave Simon a vision. And in a vision, he saw that a tree, something like a, a big tree was lowered down in front of him. And there was all kinds of animals, reptiles, four-legged animals, all kinds of insects, everything. And God asked Peter, kill and eat. And Peter told God, I have never in my entire life eaten something that is unclean. And God told Peter that, don't call the things that I have classified clean, unclean. Hallelujah. In the Jewish custom at that time, the Jews were not supposed to mingle with unbelievers. They were not supposed to associate themselves with unbelievers. They were not supposed to have anything to do with those who do not believe in what they believe. But the gospel has been given to them. God has given them what? The gospel. But how can you give the gospel to the people when in your culture and your traditional norms, you are not allowed to even talk to that person? That's the same issue Jesus had with the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. He said, you Jew says that. The only place that we can go and worship is Jerusalem. Say, you are a Jew. How come you are asking me, a Samaritan woman, a water to drink? Just think about it. If a Jew cannot even ask me water to drink, do you think he will bother to give me the gospel? These are the cultural norms that we need to break in order to present the gospel to all nations. The person might not speak the same language that you speak, but God has mandated all of us to speak the gospel to all nations, irrespective of the cultural norms and the barriers that are between us. The gospel of God must be preached. Hallelujah. The vision is given. But Peter was contemplating. And God made it clear that this is what I want you to do. Hallelujah. The, whole, the Bible says that even when the people that Cornelius sent to Peter got to the door. The Holy Spirit called Peter. Peter, there is some people at the door waiting for you. Go and attend to them. Welcome them in. Hallelujah. That's how serious God is about evangelism. The Holy Spirit told Peter, stop thinking. The vision is given to you already. Go out there and open that door and welcome them in. On the other side of the story, whilst Peter was welcoming the messengers, Cornelius, the Bible says that Cornelius went to his family, immediate family, those that he cares about, and told them something is about to happen. Hallelujah. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. Something is about to happen. Hallelujah. And I want you to be a witness of that thing. When you read further, he went to his friends. 
and told them that something is about to happen. Even though Cornelius have not seen what is going to happen, even though Cornelius have no idea what God has in store for him, he went and told his family and friends that something is about to happen. Come to my house. Something is going to happen. There is an expectation that God is going to do something. Hallelujah. He gathered those that he loved. His friends. And they all were waiting for Peter. Hallelujah. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. A mighty healer. He healed the leper. Kabo Sandaraba. When the people. Everywhere he went, my Lord was doing good. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. A mighty healer, he healed the lepers. When the creeper saw him, they started. Everywhere he went, my Lord was doing good. There was an expectation. The reason why currently we are not seeing the miraculous signs of God in the church is that there is no expectation. Church, it is okay to expect from God. It is not sin to expect from God. It is not an abomination to say that God, next year by this time, I don't have anything, but I want to have the nicest of things. It is okay to, 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 to have that expectation that God, I want to help people, and in order to do that, I need the best of jobs. Hallelujah. Because without a job, you will not be able to do it. It is okay to expect from God. It is not a crime. But because everything is so accessible here, we tend to call into our shelves and say, well, at the end of the day, I will have what I will eat, so it's okay. It is not okay. It is time for us to have a better expectation, a greater expectation from God. Because with greater expectation, there will be more manifestation of God's glory in our lives. I don't know what you are expecting this year, though. But me, next year, I want to take into a different realm. Hallelujah. I want to take into a different realm. Spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, and psychologically. Hallelujah. I want to experience God in a special way. And I want my finances to be in a different dimension. So that when I am giving to the church of God, I will give as if I am mad. Hallelujah. We want to get to a point where when we talk about building fund, hallelujah, I will be able or you will be able or someone will be able to say that church, this is $500,000. Just take it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, you didn't like that. But I receive it in the name of the Lord. That we are getting to a place. It doesn't matter. And maybe today you might see yourself as a student. But I am telling you that what God is about to do in your life, you have no idea. Only if you will avail yourself and give yourself to him, he will transform that life for you. Hallelujah. We have sat here far too long. It is time for us to arise and do something different. Hallelujah. I am tired and sick. I am tired of us being asking that we should support the church. I am tired of that. A time has come, and that time is now, that our expectations should change. 
that we shouldn't wait for the church to say that, oh, we need money to support ourselves. A time is coming and a time is now that we will be able to give to the point that the church will tell us that enough of your giving, keep it. And the only way we can do that is that when we allow God to bless us. Hallelujah. I came to this country with nothing. Nothing. I came here with nothing. Everything that I have is God that has given to me. Everything that I have, God is the one that gave it to me. So I believe that if he can bless me to this extent, then there is more to come. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to finish it up. Cornelius gathered all his family and the loved ones. And Peter, when he arrived, he put the disclosure in place. Hallelujah. He said, you all know that we the Jews, we do not mingle with you guys, right? But I have no choice in this matter. God has already revealed to me that I have to present the gospel to you. And he said, well, it's fine with us. Because we've been what? Expecting you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They were expecting him. And so Peter began to speak the gospel. Hallelujah. Peter presented the gospel to the gathering. He stated the fact. But God has shown and taught me by words that I should not call any human being common on or unhallowed or ceremonially unclean. Now I know. Hallelujah. Now I know and understand that God does not show partiality, nor is he a respecter of persons. God is not going to say that because you are from Papua New Guinea and so you are not part of his children. Because you are from the Amazon or you are not part of his children. He said, these are my children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But in every nation, he who fear God, obey God, Living upright before God is accepted by God and are welcomed by God. And then he began the message. He said, you all are aware what has happened in a few years, right? How God anointed Jesus Christ and he went about doing good. He was crucified. And why should he be crucified? Because the Bible has made it clear to us that without the shedding of blood, there will be no forgiveness of sin. So someone has to die. Hallelujah. And God chose to die in our stead. So the message of the salvation that we are talking about is about God coming in the form of human to come and redeem us, to pay the ultimate price that you and I are supposed to pay. It's nothing more than what I have just said. If anybody are to it, then the person is just exaggerating. God himself coming in the form of man to taste and to experience what we are experiencing, the loneliness. Hallelujah. I don't know if you still recall, on the cross when Jesus Christ was dying, when he mounted that cross and carried all our sins on the cross, 
The Bible says that God turned his face away from him. Hallelujah. The father turned away from the son. And that is when Jesus Christ felt what we felt. Hallelujah. He said, my God, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That is spiritual separation. When the son was separated from the father, he cried. He felt what we have felt. All the loneliness that we have been through, all the pain that we are going through, all that difficulties that we are going through, because we have been separated from the Father, the Son has experienced it. That's why he is the only person that is justified to reconcile us back to the Father. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, the gospel is justice. That we will accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. The Bible says that with the heart we believe and with our mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you have never stood any place to lift up your hands and say, Lord, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. And this day, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Come into my heart. Come and be the Lord and Savior of my heart. If you have never stood anywhere to confess that, today is your day of opportunity. And if you are listening to us online and you have never experienced this, I encourage you that you, wherever you are, you will raise up your hand at the end of this message as we pray and that you will pray with us and then receive your salvation because this life without the assurance of eternal life is waste. The Bible says that what should profit a man if he gains the entire world, all the beauties, all that the world has to offer and lose his soul? As we were studying this morning, the teachers made us understand that it is not worth losing your soul over the things of this world. That the most important thing in our life is our eternal life. The physical things are temporary, but the spiritual things what, are permanent. This very moment, maybe you find yourself in Cornelius' situation. You were raised in this church. You were brought up in this church. But you have not really accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Today is your day of salvation. This, today is the day of reckoning. This, today is the day that you will accept him and say, I'm going to walk with you and live this life with you. Hallelujah. If you happen to be someone also that is like Cornelius, you already established in the church, but you, have, you are not fully convinced whether you are saved or not. Today is your day of salvation. Because whatever we are doing here today and the days that are ahead of us is all based on one thing, that we will have eternal life. For the Bible says in John 3.16 that, For God so loved the world that he gave his only, one and only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Can we, can we please rise up as we pray shortly? Father, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you for your message of salvation this morning. We thank you for your message of salvation this morning. For we know where we were, oh God. We, will, we know where we were, oh God. We know where we were, oh God, when you took us from that place, oh God. We know where we were, oh God. We know who we are, oh God. When you brought us this far. We want to thank you this very morning. We want to thank you for the gift of salvation. For the Bible says that whilst we were yet by sinners, oh God, you sent your beloved son unto us to come and die in our state, oh God, so that we will have eternal life. 
And the Bible continues to say that even for a righteous person, someone who may, 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 may dare to die for that person, but even in our state of deprivation, you came to redeem us. This very woman, we want to say thank you, God. We want to say thank you, Jesus. We appreciate what you have done for us. We appreciate your gift of salvation. We appreciate you this morning. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. Oh, we give you all the glory. Le kaba sataya manarababa. Le bra kaba sutaya manarababa. Le bra kaba sataya manarababa. Oh, the Bible says that whilst Peter was preaching to them, while Peter was preaching the gospel to them, oh, halfway through the message, when they heard the message, the Spirit of God came upon them and they began to speak in different tongues. Oh, Kabo Sataya Manaraba. This morning, if you can speak in an unknown tongue, people speaking and giving glory to Him. Masotaya Manaraba. Ilia Manorobo Sakataya Manaraba. Father, we know there is a lot of work to be done, O God. But give us power, O God. Give us strength, O God. Give us the ability to do with O God. Leba Sotaya Manaraba. Bro Sotoroya Masakataya Manaraba. We are praying this morning. Moment. That God will give us the strength to speak His word. That God will give us the strength to pass on the gospel unto others. That God will give us the strength and ability to relay His message unto others. Irrespective of the cultural background, it's irrespective of whatever the situation is, that we will be able to speak unto others that they will come to God. They will come to the saving knowledge of God. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. Kabo Le monoraba babo sakaya manaraba le kaba sataya manaraba ili amanoraba babo sakataya manaraba le bra sakaya manaraba le bra sataya manaraba ili amanoraba babo sotoro ya manaraba oh yes lord yes lord yes lord ima kaba sataya manaraba le koro ya babo sotoro ya manaraba le kasataya manaraba if you want to re rededicate your life to Christ please lift up your hands wherever you are if you are online and you want to accept Christ as your Lord and personal Savior just stand in front of the screen and raise your up your hand right now Today is your day of salvation. Nobody knows what will happen tomorrow. Today is your day of salvation. I have no idea what will happen in the next two minutes. This is your opportunity. That God is calling you unto himself. God is calling you to reconcile you unto himself. That you will have access. That you can go to him every now and then. That you can talk to him. That you can live your life to the fullest. Without any fear or any condemnation. If you are that person, please raise up your hand wherever you are. And say this after me. With our eyes closed. Kabo Sataya Mandaraba. Heavenly Father. I acknowledge that I am a sinner not because of my current state but from Genesis up to today and I accept the situation where I am right now that I am a sinner and I need forgiveness this morning I invite you into my heart to be the Lord and master of my life. Please, Lord, come in and take absolute control over my life. And please help me to live this new life that you have called me to live. Please guide me and lead me through this difficult life, living according to your principle and for you. 
And if you believe in what you have said, just say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. What shall we say to our elder? God bless you so much, elder. We pray that his auction shall continue be upon you, that any time you are called upon, you will show us his mystery.